Hello, this is Dane Tullock and welcome to the very first episode of Cooking in the Great Outdoors. As you can see, we're overlooking the ocean here in Little Compton, Rhode Island, right near the mouth of the Saucony River. We're going to have all kinds of great activities for you today. we got stand-up paddleboard and stand-up paddleboard surfing. We're going to do some kayak fishing. Hopefully we'll be able to catch some tautogs. We can do a little tautog cucumber kiwi ceviche. we got some ribs, some black and tan ribs for you. So come join us here in Little Compton for Cooking in the Great Outdoors. All right, so first thing we're gonna to start today is the ribs. We have the charcoal grill started. My friend Mike Simpson has gotten the, the coals nice and warmed up. The thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we sear the ribs first and then cook it long and slow, low and slow. So we're gonna have the, have the heat around 500 degrees, a little bit hotter to sear it. And then once we do that, we're gonna spread the coals out, get it down to 350 or 400, and that's gonna be cooking all day while we go out, have some uh, fun fishing and stand up paddle boarding. So before you start uh, worrying about temperature, it's good to have one of these thermometers. This is a very, really basic Taylor grill thermometer. It'll tell you how warm your grill is and you just place it right down on the coals and or on the grill. So I'm gonna do that right now. Be careful not to burn your hands when you put stuff on the grill. Now, first thing we're gonna do is check out our ribs. I have here some black and tan ribs. These ribs are pork, pork short ribs. They've been marinating in some Guinness and ale, so black and tan. And they've been marinating for about 48 hours. They also have a little bit of soy sauce, some garlic, and some uh, fresh herbs from our garden, including sage and rosemary. So these are the ribs that we're actually gonna put on the grill. So the first thing I need to do is spread out the coals, put on the grill lid, and then we'll get the, uh, then we'll get the ribs right on the grill and start to sear them. All right, so the first thing we need to do is spread out our coals so we have a nice even heat, but keep them centered in the middle of the grill so we have nice warm temperature. So I'm just going to go ahead and spread out the coals a little bit. You can still see there's some blackness on some of the coals, so they're not quite ready to start yet. You can see a nice red glow in the middle, so it's nice, getting nice, warm, and hot. Once we get the coals warm and hot, we're going to put the lid on top, or put the grill down on top of it, and then that's where we're going to cook and sear the meat. And then once the meat is seared on both sides, we'll spread the coals out and start that low and slow cook. Now these ribs are going to have three parts to them. So it's, I like to layer my ribs so you have different flavors at different sections of the rib. So the first thing, first layer we have is our marinade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a sweet whiskey glaze and glaze the ribs on both sides. Then we're going to take a rub, my own homemade rub uh, mixture that uses fresh herbs including sage, rosemary from our garden. It also uses some stuff I'm not going to tell you about because that's a secret. We'll rub the ribs and then finally when the ribs are nice and done and you have a little bit of the bone sticking out Then we'll put on the barbecue sauce and this is my famous roasted red pepper barbecue sauce cooked this about two days ago It's uh, has uh, it's a tomato based sauce that I created from scratch has green and red bell peppers And then some crushed black pepper and once again some secret ingredients, so that'll be really tasty as well And one important thing to remember is always save your marinade. You never know when you might need it later to make sure your ribs are nice and moist. So that's why I use these baggies. It makes it very easy to transport to an outdoor area like this, but it helps you retain your marinade. So in case you need it later, you got it to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put these meat side down. Cause once again, my, the whole point of what I'm trying to do right now is get a nice sear on the meat side. Hear that nice sizzle? I love that. You can already smell the pork starting to cook right as you sear it on the grill there. It's always important to have the right tools for the job. Nice long pair of heavy duty tongs so you don't burn yourself on the grill. Nice grilling fork so you can move stuff around. And I also have a spatula if I decide that uh, I want to do things like burgers and whatnot so I can get that stuff up off the grill as well. Another important thing when you're barbecuing or cooking outside on an open grill is you want to make sure you have a nice basting brush. This is a Teflon brush so it doesn't burn. I'm not a real fan of the hair brushes, I, the hair uh, basting brushes. They tend to drop hairs and get all over your meat. I like a Teflon brush to work. It works really well for me. You want to leave the ribs face down on the grill for about two to five minutes and make sure there's a nice sear. You can tell there's a sear when you have nice lines across the meat. So we're just going to let that sit for a few moments. The one thing that I am going to prep is my sweet whiskey glaze because that's going to go on next. Now this is Jack Daniels whiskey mixed with some honey and a little bit of brown sugar. And I boiled it at home. 
rendered it all down so it was nice and smooth in, in its uh, consistency. And that's going to be our glaze. It's going to make a nice candy coating on the ribs. That's going to help those herbs for the rubs stick to the ribs. And then we're going to coat all that with this, uh, red pe uh, the bell pepper barbecue sauce. It's going to be amazing. So let's look at the ribs, see uh, where we are with the sear. You can see we're starting to get some nice black dark lines across it from the heat of the grill. I'm going to flip that back over, give it about one more minute. Look at these and look at that. Oh, see that one's nice and done. So we want to flip that over, get that off the heat, put this one on the heat. So you can always rotate your meat. If you have a part of the grill that's a little warmer, you can move your meat around. This one is done as well. So while we're waiting for this to get seared, let's throw on the second batch of ribs and get those started as well. Now one of the best things about cooking in the outdoors is having uh, all your friends outside soaking up the fresh air. We're out here in the middle of uh, Rhode Island in November and you'd think it'd be na nasty, nor'easters blowing, but we've lucked out today. We have 60 degree temperature. The fog is almost completely burned off, so it's going to be a wonderful day out here. Any opportunity that I get to go outside and spend time in the outdoors, I take it. And you'll notice that as the ribs get, become seared, I put them on the outside of the grill and have the new ones in the middle. And once again, that helps the uh, helps uniform cook, take advantage of the different, different heat zones. It's going to be hotter in the middle where the coals are piled up and it's going to be cooler around the outside. Now you can also do this with beef ribs. I personally prefer short ribs because they got that nice fatty texture from the pork. Um, they cook down really well. Um, but if you want to do this with beef ribs, you can do that as well. Or you can do, uh, you can even use this uh, recipe with chicken. Uh, I wouldn't uh, recommend fish, but chicken or any poultry, fowl, Cornish hens, whatever you want. All right, so we have uh, three of the ribs that are seared nicely. We're working on our second set. We're almost there with the second set of ribs. Take a look at these over here. They're going to take a little bit more time. Oh wrong side down. There you go. All right, now usually at this point I would have a nice frosty beverage like a beer. Uh, it's not quite noon, so I'm going to wait a little bit longer to crack open my beer. Um, so I actually do have some iced tea over here in my coffee cup to make sure that uh, I'm hydrated because one thing you don't want to do is get dehydrated when you're cooking over a grill. You got to keep an eye when it flares up like that. That's the fat dropping into the fire. Can really start to flame up. So you got to keep an eye on it. Even when I walk away, I'm going to have to make sure that somebody is keeping an eye on the uh, grill the whole time that I'm out fishing. Because the last thing we want to do is come back to a bunch of black, cakey, burnt ribs. Um, once again, the uh, important thing about ribs is to remember to cook them low and slow. The longer the better. I like to cook my ribs for about four hours, right around 300 degrees, maybe a little bit higher to 350, 400. And you'll know your ribs are done when you start to see about a quarter inch of the bone sticking out of each side of the rib. So we'll show you that once we get to that point. That's looking good. So we're going to move that one to the outside. Got our last rib searing in the middle. I don't know about you, but our cameraman Jer Jeremy over here is already drooling, so the smell's amazing. It's just something about the fire and the flames outdoors. I got the ocean. I have the ocean in the background. You can hear the waves roaring. Mix that with the sound of the fire, and later on we're going to have a bunch of people out here. Um, so we'll have a big group of friends hanging out, having fun, and that's what it's all about. Great food, great locations, great people, and building up an appetite so you have room to put all this food. All right, we got one more center sear. Actually, that one's done, so we're down to the last one here. That's nice and seared. Got one more, and I'm going to flip these over since that tends to be a little hotter on the right side here. It's very important, once again, to realize where the temperature zones are on your grill. And it's going to be a little different every time depending on how you stack the coals, ambient air temperature, all that fun stuff. So it's, you need to make sure that every time you cook on an open grill like this, that you're all set and that you're aware of the fact of where your heat zones are and you take advantage of them. All right, now look at that. We have eight nicely seared ribs right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and baste them with the sweet uh, whiskey glaze. 
And then once we do that, I'm going to take the grill off the heat for just a second so that I can redistribute the coals and then we'll go with the uh, low and slow. And once again, this glaze is made out of Jack Daniels whiskey, honey, and brown sugar. And all you do is you, you simmer it on low on your stove in a nice pot. And uh, just let it render down to where it's a consistent mix. If when it cools down, it's not in a liquid form like this, all you need to do is add a little ale to it. That'll help lighten it up, thin it up, make it spreadable. You don't want it to be like a thick like honey or almost like molasses, because if it's like that, you're not gonna be able to base it real well on the ribs. And you don't need to be shy with the, uh, with the glaze here. Now you can see the fire's really going, so I'm gonna set this glaze aside. Get a couple towels here. All right, once again, you wanna be very careful. And I'm actually gonna put these over on my table on my cutting board real quick. All right, we'll come back for those in just a second. So once again, you can see that the coals have cooked down a little bit. I'm gonna just spread them out. I'm actually gonna add a few more because once again, we're gonna be cooking for about four hours. You can see, uh, I don't know if you guys can catch that, but the temperature right now, it, it was at about 500. So that's nice and hot. We wanna get that down to below 400, closer to 350. Now, once again, the key is to have a single layer of uh, coals throughout the entire grill. That'll keep it from getting too warm, but it'll keep it nice and consistent all the way around. And these are uh, match light coals, so I don't, they, they don't require any uh, lighter fluids. You see they flame up pretty quickly. So I'm gonna put the new coals in the middle, try not to burn my fingers off as I do it. All righty there. And we'll let those catch, and then we'll push the older coals out to the outside. All right, so we're gonna go out and see if we can catch some fresh Todd Tog out here in Little Compton using my uh, sit on top uh, kayak set up here. So we got a 15 foot uh, ocean kayak prowler uh, sit on top. We've got two rods and reels. We're using green crabs as bait. These are dead buggers. They do real well for Todd Tog and sometimes striper and uh, bluefish. And so we'll be out here amongst the rocks out further out on the rocks hopefully we'll be able to catch something and uh in case i do i got my trusty gopro helmet cam so we'll see if uh we can get some uh, good shots out there for you guys as well you can also note that some folks are uh, stand up paddle boarding out there to our left um, not much waves today but it's still fun to be out there on the water so looking forward to catching some fish and we'll see you on the other side All right, so we're back now. We have the uh, coal spread out. There's still a little bit of flame going, but they're starting to gray out nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and take the marinade. Once again, it's a wi uh, sweet whiskey glaze. Remarinate all the meat. You don't wanna be shy with this stuff because you really want a nice glaze on the outside of your ribs. Ooh. You hear that? I got ums and ahs from the uh, peanut gallery here already. All right. You can see all the fat that's uh, burning off on the grill, so we want to make sure that we keep a good eye on that. 
Flame ups are no reason to panic. You just want to make sure you stay in control of your fire at all times and, and realize that this is whiskey glaze. So part of that flame up is due to the fact that the alcohol in the whiskey is actually burning off in the fire. And the other thing you want to be aware of is if you have uh, pets in the area, we do have a couple dogs running around. Don't let them get up and uh, take the ribs off of the grill. Wouldn't be the first time. All right. Now I'm going to use up 100% of this glaze because there's no sense in saving it for later. Put these back over here. All that nice smoke, it smells amazing. I keep getting people uh, who drive up telling me they can smell this uh, food from a couple miles away, so that's, uh, that's always a good sign. And the grill's getting very hot, so once again, you gotta be careful not to uh, overcook stuff. Keep moving everything around. It's almost like playing chess with the fire. You gotta make sure that you're on top of it and you're uh, making sure your meat's moving around so it's not burning. And then once the coals start to gray up nicely, uh, the heat will start to come down a little bit and we can open up a few of the uh, louvers on the grill and we'll have it at a nice 400 degree temperature hopefully. Oh. All right, we got a little more glaze left. I think I missed one guy down here, so let's make sure we get him. When you're down to the dregs, just pour it on there. All right, we're gonna get another flare up there in a second. Woo! And then next up is gonna be our herb rub. And then on top of that, after we get the herb rub done and we get everything nice and low and slow, we're gonna actually put some wood chips down on the fire to get a nice smoke coming through. All right, so we have just finished up our sweet whiskey glaze. We'll put that off to the side. We're almost to a complete uniform grayness on the coals. We have a little few, a few more black spots. So once those cook off, we'll be set to go. Until they do, we wanna make sure we don't cover the grill. We want to make sure that we uh, control the heat and keep, can keep an eye on the meat. And you can see there's still some flames there. Let the last of the uh, whiskey glaze uh, burn off there. Right now the uh, thermometer's got the temperature at about 450 degrees, so that's still a little warm. We want it to get down, like I said, to between 300 and 350. Um, so we're cooking low and slow. a nice crisp glaze on the bottom of the ribs. The other thing you always want to do is when you're cooking ribs, you, you, after you sear them, you want to cook the meat up. That way if you do get flare-ups, it flares up on the bone side of the rib and you don't destroy your good meat side. So I always try to uh, make sure I cook my ribs meat side up once we get the uh, initial sear done. All right. And once again, there's no such thing as panic in the kitchen. If something flares up, if you get a hot spot, or if you think something's about to overcook, there are ways to take care of it. So just remain calm, remain focused, and you can pretty much take care of anything. All right, so this is my uh, fresh herb rub. It's made with sage, thyme, rosemary, oregano, and some extra spices. Um, many of the herbs are actually cooked in our garden. We dried them in a dehydrator and then uh, chopped them up so you have a nice uh, um, mixture. You wanna make sure that your mixture is uniform. There's also some garlic uh, and garlic salt in there. You wanna make sure it's uniformly mixed so that you don't have just one section of rosemary or one section of sage. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle this liberally on the ribs. Once again, I want to make sure that I'm not burning anything. And don't be afraid to uh, pet your meat, so to speak. Get the uh, rub nice and embedded in the meat there. The best kind of cook is a hands-on cook. Well, next to a fat cook, I should say. The next kind of cook is a hands-on cook. 
So don't be afraid to uh, manipulate stuff. You know, obviously you want to make sure your hands are nice and clean. But when you're using rub, you always want to make sure you pat the meat or pat the spices down into the meat, get them nice and embedded in there. Every nook and cranny. Once again, we don't want to be shy with this because we want a lot of robust flavors. And as the meat cooks, some of this stuff is going to fall off as we add barbecue sauce later that's going to mix with that. Ooh, that's warm. And so if you remember, I, this is a layered rib recipe. So our first layer was the marinade. Our second layer was the sweet whiskey glaze. The rub is the third layer. And the fourth layer is going to be that wonderful roasted pepper barbecue sauce. All right, we're almost done with the uh, rub here. I mean, you can just look at that. Look at all the nice colors, all the um, herbs on the meat. This is going to be amazing. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this grill back off and then I'm going to lay down the, uh, the, the uh, wood chips and the charcoal and then we're going to cover it and let it cook low and slow and then we're going to go out and do some fishing for some tog tog. So we'll be right back in a few moments. So we're back on land now. We tried to do some kayak fishing, weren't quite successful, but my boy Mike Simpson here has got the local hookup. Mike, what did you bring for us today? I brought some uh, local, caught just a little bit ago, some fresh tatog. Uh, a lot of people call them rockfish. Tatog is uh, really popular. This guy is still, he's kicking. Uh, bottom dweller, they've got a really interesting mouth feature. Uh, their taste is unbelievable. Very, light. very nice light white flesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to flay these guys up and look at those teeth, Jeremy. I mean, these guys are, oop, they almost got me there. They eat off the bottom. They almost yeah. have this piranha looking mouth. They got some oh. serious teeth. So what we're going to do so is they we're eat shellfish on the bottom. They eat lobster. It's one of the biggest things that they eat. They love to eat lobster. <laughs> Just like so. we do. So what we're going to do is we're going to flay these guys up and we're going to make a nice cucumber kiwi ceviche out of part of it. And then we're going to grill up the rest. So Mike, you ready for some tautog and ribs? I'm totally ready. Let's do it. We took the tautog and we prepared it in a little olive oil and a, a cast iron skillet over the, the nice roaring fire. And then I added a relish of um, cucumbers, kiwi, avocado, lime juice, and a lot of garlic. So that's what we're cooking here and we're going to let it get nice and toasty. And my spatula just came over my right shoulder here. So you can see that what we did was we put the tautog down on the grill to get a nice crisp skin. And now we're just letting it cook out. And uh, it should take about five more minutes and it'll be a nice uh, flavorful tautog with a uh, cucumber, avocado, kiwi salsa. So there you go. Okay, so now we're back. The coals have been redistributed. I added some uh, coals that were just regular uh, charcoal without the match light on it so they didn't flare up to keep everything nice and warm. Now I have some uh, hickory chips. They're actually hickory chunks that I have soaked in water for about 12 hours. Um, that's to keep them nice and moist so they don't burn up. So what we're going to do is we're going to spread some of these chips around the fire and this is going to give us a nice smoky flavor added to the meat. And you just want to kind of place them around. And the other thing you want to do as the uh, ribs cook, every once in a while you want to take the, the grill off of the, um, the grill plating off of and uh, wet down everything so that the uh, wood stays nice and moist. So we'll have a little water beside the fire. It also helps you control flare ups. So if you get a, a, a fat flare or a little bit more flare from that um, sweet whiskey glaze, That'll, uh, you can put that out quickly with the, uh, with the water. All right. So we have all the wood chips right there on the grill. I'm gonna walk over here and grab a, catch our meat again. It's pretty important to make sure that you have something to protect your hands with so you don't burn them. You can see that the ribs are, uh, 
seared. They have the glaze on them. They have the, the uh, herb rub on them. And now it's time for low and slow. So we want to make sure that the grill, once again, stays between 350 and 400 degrees. So we'll have somebody keep an eye on that. And then um, we're just going to let it cook for the next three or four hours. And we'll keep checking back on it. I'm okay, so we're about an hour, hour and a half in on the ribs. Let's see what they look like. All that nice smoke. They're starting to cook up. You can see some of the bones starting to peek out on the side of the rib there. The heat's a little low, so we're going to add some more charcoal um, and get a little more heat on there. So my beautiful assistant, Mike Simpson, is going to grab the charcoal while I put the ribs over here. Should flare up in a second here, put a piece of wood on top of it. Definitely have some good smoke. And two and a half hours to go. Okay, as always with cooking in the great outdoors, I always like to take a look at stewardship and nonprofit organizations that help support the outdoors. And I have on my right, I have Mike Simpson, and on my left, I have Will Ridge. And these guys took an amazing trip up from Key West to Maine on stand up paddle boards to support Sup the Coast, Sup Cleanup, and Wounded Warriors. So, why don't you guys tell me about that real quick, Mike? Well, we didn't eat as much delicious food as we're going to eat here tonight, but we paddled from Key West, Florida to Portland, Maine. For those causes, we cleaned up a bunch of plastic trash and all sorts of other trash you can imagine. Also met with um, our fine heroes in the uh, military services and uh, just paddled up the coast for about 90 days. And uh, here we are. So Will, what got you guys started? Mike got us started with some crazy idea that I agreed to and uh, just took, kind of took off from there and um, put everything together and made it happen. Cool beans. Now, what made you guys think about supporting sub cleanup? What was the impetus for that? Just seeing all the crap and the just all the plastic we see on every day is just amazing. So might, might as well have just cleaned up trash for 20 minutes a day, every day. Excellent. See what we can do. And it was great to see you guys at Thompson Island uh, when we did that cleanup as well. Yeah. Um, you guys paddled up. We did some uh, some cleanup and we had a nice barbecue out there. So, what is the the best memory you guys have from that? That trip. What's the one thing that really sticks out to you, Will? <laughs> That's really hard to say because there there were so many great memories. Um, but yeah. Probably one of the things that sticks out the most isn't necessarily a good memory, but being being caught in Chesapeake Bay. That, that's a memory that sticks out pretty vividly in my mind. Going across the uh, go, go, bridge tunnel there, the Bay Bridge tunnel? Yep, yeah. cr crossing right across the bay and kind of getting stuck in some bad weather. Uh, Excellent. It's so it's pretty hairy out there sometimes, right? It, it can get very hairy out there. All right, guys. Well, thanks for having me out here at your uh, home uh, break in Little Compton. And I definitely appreciate all the guys, all the stuff that you guys did to support SUP uh, Cleanup and Wounded Warriors. And uh, I'm proud to be your friends and proud to know you both, you guys. So. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for bringing Thank out you. the feast. Okay, so we're back out from the water doing some fishing. Let's check out on the ribs. You can see that there's a lot of beautiful smoke there right into the camera. And so they have a nice dark glaze on them. The um, herbs are good. You can see that you're starting to see some of the bone. So time for the roasted red pepper barbecue sauce. Now these look really dark, but that's because of all the smoke. They're not actually burnt. And so... Gonna pour some of this barbecue sauce on top of them. Now, once again, this is a roasted red pepper barbecue sauce. It has several different types of roasted bell peppers, some sweet yellows, and then it also has herbs. It has some whiskey, a little bit of um, beer, and a bunch of other ingredients that I'm not gonna tell you about. There are some, there is some sage in there and some fresh herbs from our garden as well. Plus, uh, of course, it's a tomato-based sauce, as you can tell by the nice red color. So these ribs have been cooking now for about three and a half hours or so and they're almost done. We'll let this uh, sauce glaze out on top of them and then we'll be ready to go. Once again you don't have to uh, be shy about putting on the sauce. You want lots of sauce and we'll come back in we'll, at least one more time and add a little bit more before we're all said and done. And there you go. So the sauce is all set. We'll let these cook a little bit longer. Let that sauce bake in. And we'll be good to go. All right, we'll be seeing you in just a few moments. There's like four ribs. Wow, thank All you right. so much. You're welcome, bud.
Oh, it's amazing. Isn't that good? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. So the ribs are done. We've taken them off the grill. You can see we have a couple racks here. And uh, I have my friend, new friend Bob over here. Bob, what do you think of those ribs? Is this is okay? unbelievable, truly. I mean, I've been <laughs> smelling it all day long, and now I'm finally getting a chance to oh, dig in. Excellent. Well, I'm it's glad you like them, Bob. And you came from, you came from uh, Walden Pond area? Yeah. Excellent. So Bob drove all the way down here to hang out with us in Little Compton, and I'm glad you got some ribs before you had to head home, Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And check out this sunset while you guys are out here. Right now, I only get sunsets like this so in Little Compton. Thank you, maybe. So we're about ready to wrap it up here in Little Compton as the sun sets behind me. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. I want to thank Mike Simpson and the Sub to Coast crew for helping me out, my friends from Osprey Kayaks. I want to remind everybody to get outside, get active, get hungry, and start cooking in the great outdoors. Thank you. <laughs>